Good morning, remote learners. Let's talk about this. The human head. Today, I'm going to do a medium length demo on how to draw this bad boy. So here's the gist of it. When you're trying to draw the human head, you want to think of it as an upside down egg. Your days of drawing basketball heads are over. Leave that for your kid brother. When you're drawing your neck, your neck extends from the side of your face. Like so. No more chicken necks. Again, leave that for your kid brother. What I usually do when I'm working on the head is I draw a line halfway down the head, like so. Then I draw a second line, halfway from that line, all the way down to the bottom of that upside down egg slash chin. And then I draw a third line, halfway down from that second line to the chin. Then I take a fourth line and I go right down the middle. This is going to help me when I start placing my features. So at this point, I'm ready to draw my eyes. Generally speaking, when you're drawing eyes, there is about three quarters of an eye in between each eye. That will help you avoid spacing them either too far apart or too close together. Now, when you're ready to draw your iris, another name for the colored part of your eye. You want to think of it as a sphere, as a circle. That you don't see the bottom or top of. The reason I say that is that unless you're in a state of absolute shock or surprise, you're not going to see white above or below that iris. One of the most common mistakes students make is they'll draw an eye like this, and I asked them, how good was that sunny side up egg this morning? Because that's what it looks like. The other common mistake is students will draw it like this and forget about the tear duct, which is right there. Because the deal is this, even if you have never, ever, ever cried, you have a tear duct. When it comes to the pupil, the rule of thumb is not too big, not too small. The color part of your eye, the iris, in order to make it look realistic, I create what I refer to as starbursts, kind of like rays of a sun. When I'm doing the eyelashes, I draw them going out to the side. The reason I do that is that, look, we all love Bambi. But not one of his eyebrows that look like that. Or eyelashes, rather. When you're drawing the eyebrows, this is where it gets kind of interesting. You really want to focus on how and where your hair grows. How thick is it? How thin is it? Where is it thick? Where is it thin? And here's why. This right here is an entirely different person than that. Your eyebrows really, really re represent you much more than you might think. So really, really focus on that. When it comes to the nose, you want to think of it like Gonzo. Meaning, even though you don't actually look like this, your nose does work like that. When you were little, your kid brother, you probably drew it something like this. Well, here's the deal. If your nose cuts across your face like that, you have a deviated septum and you can't breathe. You're a mouth breather. And right now with all these germs going around, that's not what you want to be. <sighs> so instead, let your nose form up into your eyebrow. I usually also suggest only drawing about one half of it, one side rather, because if you draw both sides, it can kind of flatten out the nose. So I draw one half, 
I draw a little divot for the second half over there. Two little black holes for your nostrils. And then this little divot right here. When it comes to my lips, I think of them almost as like that kissy fish face you'll make when you're little. Where if you go like this, your bottom lip is going to be thicker going up and down, but less wide going from left to right. Whereas your upper lip is going to be the exact opposite. It is going to be wider from left to right and thinner from top to bottom. When it comes to ears, oh my goodness. It is so hard to make them not look like Dumbo or to not look like you really can't hear much of all. So if you take your fingers and you wrap them across your head from the top of your ear to the bottom of your ear, all the way across, and you go like that, they're gonna line up with your eyebrows and the bottom of your nose. I generally recommend drawing them almost as a S-ish, C-ish squiggle shape. And if you're lucky and you have long hair, you can cover them and not draw them at all. Now, at this point, it still was kind of alien. Um, I often have students say, well, why is my head that big? Why are my eyes halfway down my head? They should be up higher. They shouldn't. And here's why. This right here coincides with my crown, which is right here. So even if you don't have bangs, you're going to have hair below that. So just to simplify this, I am going to draw a dudette on this side. And a dude on the other side. I'm going to give him a little bit of a, a mullet. Now, once you start drawing in the hair, you start realizing that it looks a lot less like an alien and much more human. So that, my friends, is how you draw the human head.